All right, I wanted to take a few minutes to just actually look at the Berean passage, right? Um, just so I don't get accused of just kind of treating it rather flippantly or <laughs> superficially. So, and I just don't want, I don't want to even just look at the actual passage. Let's just start from the beginning of chapter 17 of the book of Acts. So we're talking about the Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. And, you know, we'll just look at the... Uh, background before they even get before Paul and Silas um, even get to Berea all right and when they had passed through Amp Amphip Amphipolis and Apollonia they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews and Paul according to his custom went in unto them and for there for three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the scriptures right so kind of what I was saying in the last video I mean he's not just reading the scriptures to them he's reasoning with them he's debating with them he's saying hey here's this passage this is what it means and they're probably gonna ask questions like no oh, no that doesn't mean blah 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 right so it's just you know imagine you're right you know just a normal conversation you've had in your own experience that's what's going on there so he's not just reading the scriptures to them. Obviously, they had the scriptures all along. They need new information. They need authority. They need someone who knows what they're talking about, has a new message, and is trying to justify it using the Old Testament scriptures, right? That's what's happening. Verse 3, declaring and insinuating that the Christ was to suffer and to rise again from the dead, and that this is Jesus Christ, whom I preach to you. And some of them believed... Note, some of them believed, right? Not all of them, right? And were associated to Paul and Silas. And of those that served God, and of the Gentiles, a great multitude, and of noble women, not a few. But the Jews moved with envy, and taking unto them some wicked men of the vulgar sort, and making a tumult, set the city in an uproar, and besetting Jason's house, sought to bring them out unto the people and not finding them they drew jason and, and certain brethren to the rulers of that city crying they that set the city in an uproar are come hither also whom jason hath received and these also do contrary to the decrees of caesar saying that there is another king jesus and they stirred up the people and the rulers of the city hearing these things and having taken satisfaction of Jason and the rest, they let them go. Verse 10. But the brethren immediately sent away, or sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, when they were come thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, who received the word with all eagerness, daily searching the scriptures, whether these things were true or so. So let's pause there for a second. The modern day like Protestants who will use this, like oh, I'm a Berean, right? I want to test your Catholic doctrine using the Berean method. Well, these were Bereans, all right? These were the Bereans. So they were daily searching the scriptures. So if they were sola scripturis, then it should be clear using the Berean method, that the scriptures are clear enough, even with the benefit of the Apostle Paul himself. All of them should believe, right? Because they're using the Berean method. Well, what actually happened? And many, indeed, of them believed. Did it say all? No, not all. Many. And of honorable women that were Gentiles, and of men not a few. And when the Jews of Thessalonica and knowledge had the word of God, who was preached by Paul at Berea, they, I don't know if we need to uh, do the whole context here, but or the rest of it, um, well, that's Latin right there. Uh, Come thither also, stirring up and troubling the multitude, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul, and go unto the but Silas and Timothy remain there. All right. So the point here, I think, is... Let me put this back down. Sorry. Um, 
So if you're saying, Mr. Protestant, if you're saying that the Berean method is analogous to, identical to the Sola Scriptura method, then it should be clear enough from the scriptures alone what the truth of the matter is. And yet, not all of Berians believe. Not all the Berians accepted. Other things to note here, again, it's not just the scriptures. Obviously, the, the information, if you're talking about, okay, let's say the, the, the Berians who ended up at the end of that day believing and joining Paul and Silas in, in this new Christian journey. <laughs> They're not Jews anymore. They're going to be Christians. What is the content of that belief, that new belief? What is the content of that new belief? Is it just the object of the Berean method, allegedly, which is the scriptures of the Old Testament? Or is it a synthesis of the truths that were hidden in the Old Testament, having been illumined, having been explained with fresh eyes, with a new perspective, with new goggles or glasses, whatever the analogy you want to use, by Paul. And not just his interpretive um, enlightenment that he's providing for them, but that he actually has a new, he has new information that the Messiah they were looking for is Jesus of Nazareth. Right? That's new content. That's new information. That's gospel. And it's not just, you know, Jesus is is is, is the Messiah. He's, there's other things too. He's the son of God. He's the uh, he di he died for your for your sins. There's a resurrection of the dead. There's a judgment. There's you know, the the promise of heaven for those who believe. There's there's hell uh, for all eternity, all those things. There's new content. And that new content eventually, uh, much of it, is found in the New Testament. Um, the, what, that's what we're reading here. The Acts of the Apostles, part of the New Testament. New content. So it's not just the Berean method. It's not that simple. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's the Old Testament. It's the new content of the new um, of the New Testament of the New Covenant, and part of that is a written form in the tw in a form of the twenty seven books of the New Testament, which the Roman Catholic Church provided for the whole Christian world. It exists today because of the preservation of the leaders of the church, 1st century, 2nd century, 3rd century, up through the 16th century, when the Protestant Reformation happened and the, and the Protestants, you know, sort of broke off on their own and took with them the book, the book that was part, and the guardianship of that book was, was, the, was the Catholic Church. It, it was their, it's their book. It's, it's the Catholic book. I, I, I looked over at my shelf and I realized that I have, I have a book by that same title. <laughs> the Bible is a Catholic book by Jimmy Aiken. I haven't read it yet. Um, I recently got it from Catholic Answers. So, the Bible is a Catholic book. That's where the Protestants got it. Because the Catholic Church preserved it all those years. And they took it with them. And the only reason why you have it now, you can go to Barnes & Noble and buy... A nicely leather-bound, you know, King James Version. It's because of the Roman Catholic Church. So do, please, do not throw the baby out with the bathwater like the Reformation Protestants did. You're going to take the Bible and you're going to trust that the, that the church got it right for those 27 books. That the church got it right all those centuries. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll take the book, but I'll go off on my way and start interpreting it on my own. There's so many passages that we can look into to show that that's not the proper way. 
um, Peter talks about in his epistle. He said, there's many things that Paul taught that many people twist, misunderstand, twist to their own destruction because they are untaught, unlearned. Unlearned by, by what? What do you mean? They know how to read. <laughs> they know how to read like the Berians. No, it's not that they can't read. It's that they can't understand it properly because it needs they need to be taught the proper way of understanding the scriptures not just the epistle of peter but the ethiopian eunuch when philip came came up to him and said hey do you know what you're reading and he's like how do i know what i'm how can i understand what i'm reading unless someone teaches me and it's not just any teacher it has to be a teacher that has been sent apostello an apostle to be sent Someone that's sent by the authority of Christ through the church, through the authority of the apostles. And those are the teachers that are sent by the Roman Catholic Church. It was true in the first century, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth century, all throughout. And it's still true today. God bless. Bye.